Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's very own news program. I'm Leah Ferrante. And I'm Allie Jeter, and here's your news now. And here are your top stories from around the country. September 11, 2001 opened the eyes of every American, changed the way we see the world and how the world sees us. It's been 10 years since the attack on American soil. Let's take a look with Greg Stevens and 10 years later. Uh, September 11th, uh, 20, uh, 2001 really uh, brought about many major changes in the United States. Uh, it was for my generation and your generation uh, Pearl Harbor, because the United States uh, was in a seemingly unprovoked uh, attack uh, by uh, Islamic radicals right on our uh, soil. And I think that it's I important uh, not to forget, uh, because um, uh, at least spiritually to me, people uh, remain alive and have an afterlife uh, by those uh, uh, who remember them. The 10 year anniversary of September 11th, Cabrini College will be setting up flags around campus on Friday the 9th. And there will be, uh, you'll see, if you look around campus, around Founders Hall, around Idarola Center, and all over the houses, you'll see about 400 to 500 flags. Cabrini's Community Service and Outreach Club, along with SGA and the RAs now, as well as Counseling Services, and um, CSOC and SGA have been working closely together to set up a candlelight vigil on campus. We're also setting up flags around campus this week, and we're having a remembrance signing on Friday in Founders Hall so students can come by, sign the name of a loved one who may have passed away due to the events of September 11th. Well, I think that uh, uh, I grew up understanding that uh, uh, nationalism was a will of a people to live together. I think it, it really says something about the community here that just because so many people, they want to reach out and help out with the events and it just really says something about how they felt about 9-11 and how they want to continue that community. It shows that Cabrini is a family, like with, it shows that we all care about each other. Being in a small school, that's what it feels like. We're all family here. President Obama vows aid for damages from Hurricane Irene, but budget shortfalls in the Federal Emergency Management Agency have acted as obstacles for relief. FEMA has a little more than $800 million left in its budget, and the White House stated the underterms of the budget deal. Congress can provide more than $11 billion in disaster aid without offsetting budget cuts. The deadline to replenish FEMA's budget is October 1st. The U.S. Postal Service is coming on hard times as it may result in a full shutdown if emergency action is not taken to guarantee the funds to pay an estimated $5.5 billion payment this month. In order to cut costs, ideas have been proposed to eliminate Saturday delivery and close up to 3,700 postal outlets. Wildfires in central Texas fueled by winds from Tropical Storm Lee have burned hundreds of thousands of acres across Texas. More than 1,000 have been scorched in the blaze as Texas has been in severe drought for 10 months. Governor Perry, a Republican presidential nominee, has taken time off the trail to handle the disaster. This past weekend, Tropical Storm Lee hit the Gulf Coast in Louisiana, dropping over a foot of rain in New Orleans and spawned tornadoes all along the coast. Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana reported flood and wind damage. No deaths have been attributed to Tropical Storm Lee. And those were your top stories from around the country. And now let's go around the block for your top local news stories. As quickly as it came, summer has unofficially come to an end with Labor Day holiday. Leah Ferrante chatted with students about their summer. Students look forward to summer all year round. Now let's check out how some of our students spend their summer. I worked at my mom's daycare because she like owns it, but the daycare's like in our house, so that's kind of annoying. But I did get to like sleep in and work and make money at the same time. And I went to Disney World, I went to the new Harry Potter thing, as nerdy as that is. Oh my god, it is amazing. It's everything it's supposed to be. It is 
Like, you have to go. You have to go. There's no other way to say it. My summer was quiet but eventful. I was taking summer classes here. I got my language credits out of the way. The teachers were really nice, so it wasn't too bad. I worked for two radio stations, and I worked in an ice cream truck. I worked concerts, promotions, club events, bar events, you name it, I did it. I babysat all the time and went to the beach. And that's about it. I worked out and pumped some iron. Uh, I tried to follow a strict diet and I lost a lot of weight, so I'm kind of happy about that. Well, at the beginning of the summer, I went to Boston for a few days and then I went home to Louisiana. I went to a research presentation and gave a presentation about bacteriophages right outside of Washington, D.C. And then at the end of the summer, I went on a 16 state road trip. I'm Leah for on Town Location. Now back to you at the news desk. The cause of the Chili's fire last, early last week has been determined as improper use of open flame that resulted in the ignition of roofing materials during contracted roof repairs. Repairmen had been using propane torches to heat roofing material before sealing. The fire smoldered and then ignited after midnight. Thousands came out in support of the third annual Philly Naked Bike Ride held this past weekend. The goals of the event are to raise awareness about fuel consumption and the environmental impact of the car culture to promote positive body image, promote economic stability, and cycling advocacy. You do not have to be naked to participate, but you can go as bare as you dare. From the Mile High City to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia's new Archbishop Chapu is set to take his post this week. Chapu, known throughout Denver for his battles against abortion, dismissing sexually abusive priests promptly, and advocating for the poor and immigrants. He'll be taking the place of Archbishop Justin Rigali, who served the Archdiocese of Philadelphia since 2003. And that was Around the Block, your top local news stories. Now let's take a trip around the world. Sparked by the fatal shooting of 29-year-old Mark Duggan in North London, the damages from the riots in London are at the cost of the taxpayers. The London police were caught off guard as many youths revolted as many thought the shooting was unnecessary. The European Union counterterrorism chief, Shove warns of an Islamic winter and his concerned extremists may take control of nations disrupted by the Arab Spring. The uprisings have provided an opportunity for Al-Qaeda to take hold. Said in a recent interview that democracy does not happen overnight. Let's hope it would not lead to some disappointment in which Al-Qaeda might be attractive once again. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's head over with Jimmy and see what this week's Tech Connection is all about. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy and here's your weekly dose of tech news. According to Bloomberg News, the U.S. Department of Justice filed a federal lawsuit to block AT&T's proposed $39 billion merger with T-Mobile USA. In the suit, the Justice Department said that AT&T's takeover would substantially lessen competition in the wireless industry. And if that wasn't enough, Sprint Nextel announced this week that it had also filed suit to block the merger. If approved, the merger would create a company with nearly 130 million subscribers, becoming the biggest wireless provider in the nation. AT&T said it has plans to fight both lawsuits. Well, it's happened again. An, AT an Apple employee has once again lost an, an iPhone prototype in a bar, according to CNET. This time, the unreleased iPhone went missing in San Francisco's Mission District in late July. The next day, when San Francisco police and Apple's own investigators tracked the phone to a nearby house, the man who had lived there said he had no knowledge of the device. To date, Apple has not been able to recover the prototype phone and it's not known what version of iOS the phone was running or if it was the much-rumored next-generation iPhone expected to launch later this year. As we approach the 10th anniversary of September 11th, the National September 11th Memorial and Museum has launched an official app to make it easier for families and visitors to the World Trade Center site and memorial to locate the names of loved ones easier. Free on the Apple App Store, this app allows anyone to explore the memorial site virtually on their iPhone or iPad. You can listen to remembrances of those who were lost, spoken by family and friends of the deceased. The arrangement of the nearly 3,000 names has been indexed and can be searched and shown the physical location of the name on the 9-11 memorial on the two walls surrounding the two reflection pools, which will be located where the towers once stood. Although it is still considered a construction site, the 9-11 memorial site is expected to be completed by this Sunday, September 11th. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Be sure to stay plugged in to the latest Tech news, and I'll be now back to Leah and Allie at the news desk. Thanks, Jimmy. And now let's check out Felicia for the album of the week.
Hey guys, it's Felicia here checking in with your album of the week. Recently, rap royalty Jay-Z and Kanye West released their much anticipated collaboration album titled Watch the Throne. This album took fans by storm immediately after its release. Twitter and the blogs were buzzing about the rappers dynamic, condescending, and witty rhyme. This album gave fans an insight into the lavish lifestyles of the rappers, their inner demons, and their views on black on black crime. One of the most air gripping qualities about the album was instrumentals produced by West, along with other heavyweights such as Swiss Beats, The Rizzo, and Pharrell. First week of its release, Watch the Throne broke records on iTunes, selling 436,000 digital copies. The Carter Four later broke that record, selling 975,000 copies in its first week. But don't worry, Jay Z and Kanye West won't be losing any sleep over this record because both of these guys start their tour in late October in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're interested in purchasing Watch the Throne, check it out on iTunes.com. Back to the studio. And now let's take a look back at this week in history. On September 6, 1915, the first tank was produced in England. Nicknamed Little Willie, the 14-ton Little Wonder was far from perfect as it had trouble going through rough terrain and had a top speed of 2 miles per hour. However, vast improvements were made to the tank before making its way to the battlefield. On September 10, 1897, the first drunk driver was arrested in London, England. George Smith, a taxi driver, slammed his car into a building. In his convic conviction, he pled guilty and was fined 25 shillings. And that was your look back in history. Now let's go to Lauren for Person of the Week. Hi, I'm Lauren Moskowski, and you're tuned in to Person of the Week. I'm here with my guest, senior finance major Anthony Geralmo and captain of the men's soccer team. This past week, they won 5-1 to one to Penn State Brandywine and 2-1 to one to Penn State Abington. Tell us about your preseason and what you guys did to work for your games. Uh, our preseason this year was a little longer than most years. We played nine days. We had two days and three days for most of the time. We did a lot of running to get in shape for the season. It was a lot of work, but like we're a close team, so it went by smoothly and went by quick. As captain, what role do you play in helping your team work through each game and win? Uh, most people think of captains as like glad people, but I like to lead by example. I don't really like to yell at people because it gets down on them. And I just like to encourage everyone, make sure everyone's doing what they need to do, make sure they're being safe during like the night before games because we have a 48-hour rule, and just make sure everyone's focused. As an individual, what do you do to prepare for each game? Uh, before each game, I kind of just listen to my headphones, listen to music that I like to listen to, whatnot. Um, I just like to get in a good mood. I don't really like to be too serious. I have a smile on my face. It's soccer. I've been playing this game since I was three years old, and I just like to have a lot of fun with it. What can you tell us to look forward to in the season to come? Uh, I think the season's going to be a lot better than last year. We should get back to where we were uh, as my, my freshman year and sophomore year as all uh, winning the CSAC. Um, we have a lot of great kids, great personalities, and the way we're playing so far, I think we're going to have a really good year. And your next game's coming up soon? Uh, we have a game tomorrow at Rutgers Camden. It's going to be a tough game. They beat us last year, 3 nothing, I believe, and they got a lot of good skilled players. Wow, that's really interesting. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this week's Person of the Week. A little piece of advice goes a long way. Now here's Danielle Alia with your Tip of the Week. Thanks, Leah. Being a student in college may take a toll on your finances, especially when you can't get a job with your busy schedule. A tip for you to consider during the year would be to avoid opening a credit card unless it is absolutely necessary. As a college student, a credit card can be a very tempting piece of plastic used to pay for just about anything. If you are not smart about your spending habits, credit cards can quickly add up. Also, don't forget about the interest that gets added to the bill every month. Keep a close record of your spending so that you do not spend more than you make. Throughout the semester, I'll be giving you some tips that will make college life a little bit easier. Until next week, I'm Danielle. For location, back to you, Allie and Leah. Now let's go to Mary Kate with your Cabrini Sports Update. The women's field hockey team claimed its first win of the season against Frostburg State University 3-2 this past Sunday. These goals were scored by freshman forward Carly Grusio, senior forward Stephanie Campanero, and junior back Taylor McGarvey. After winning the 2011 season opener last Thursday night against Penn State Brandywine, the Cabrini men's soccer team took home its second win on Saturday versus Penn State Abington 2-1. The league announced Monday that sophomore Ryan Serrato has been named CSAC Player of the Week. 
Serrata posted five points with two goals and one assist in just two matches for the Cabrini men's soccer team. After getting off to a rough start this past weekend against the Florida Marlins, the Philadelphia Phillies won Monday night to the Atlanta Braves in the first game of the three-game series with a score of 9-0. The second game of the series is set for September 7th at 7.05 at Citizens Bank Park. The long wait is over. How excited are you for the start of the NFL season? The Philadelphia Eagles are joining the National Football League for a week-long celebration of the return of football. On September 11th, the Philadelphia Eagles will be starting up the regular season with the St. Louis Rams at 1 o'clock p.m. That's all I have for you for this week for sports. Be sure to tune in next week for more sports. Now let's go to Melissa with your entertainment news. Thanks, ladies. I am Melissa Webb with the latest updates in entertainment. Although there is a trip to the beach this weekend hosted by Catboard, it doesn't mean you can't prepare for the fall while getting your last swim outdoors. Fall begins September 23rd, and the weather is beginning to cool down. So what's trendy for this fall season? Fur vests are definitely in and go great when paired with leather boots. For all you blazer lovers, go grab one that has a whittled in at the waist silhouette, which will definitely flaunt your silhouette when layering tops underneath. The runway can't get enough of animal prints, and neither can we. In other news, Justin Timberlake and Jessica Bill were spotted together at a wedding, and they are a couple once again. They split in March because Justin seems to have many links to some Hollywood A-list hotties, both before and after a, the breakup. He managed to win her over, but how long will it last this time? Regis Philbin announced that his last day on Live with Regis and Kelly will be Friday, November 18th. The Emmy Award-winning host took the show from a local New York City program to being one of the most successful talk shows in daytime television. The show will continue to go on with co-host Kelly Ripa, along with a newcomer to replace Regis. The Regis Farewell celebration season will be filled with lots of memories leading towards his departure. I'm Melissa Webb, and you've just been entertained. And that's all we have for this week. Be sure to check us out online and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Leah Ferrante. And I'm Allie Jeter. Have a great week, Cabrini.